Greetings Guardians, my name is Bife here. So, it was longer than a couple of days ago, it was probably over a week ago by the point that I'm recording this, but I made a video on the Veil, and in that video we speculated a whole bunch and put some interesting ideas out there, as well as talking about the few little facts that we do know about the Veil. But I didn't go down a rather important arc of discussion with which there is actually a lot of relevance when it comes to the Veil. And I think it's really important to talk about this. It's to do with the Veil and Fungus. Luckily for me, someone else already did just that. Maximizing Destiny, who I hadn't had the pleasure of watching up until this point, made a video all about the Veil, its potential inspiration and the link to fungi and even its link that it might have to Egregore. It's a great video and a lot of what I'm saying in this video is essentially retreading a lot of the same ground and lots of the same stuff that he mentioned. So if you're watching this video, I want you to go ahead and do something for me. Go ahead and check the description. Somewhere in there you'll find a link to not only Maximizing Destiny's video, but also his channel. Check it out and go and drop a like. He did an amazing job and this is an important topic that we really need to be absolutely looking at, but also it's good to promote other opinions and voices on a matter such as this and, well, he kind of came out and made an entire video about a topic that's actually really important to know, so yeah, it would be crazy if I didn't shout him out on this one. Thanks again to Maximizing Destiny for all of the additional discussion they've prompted, because seriously, it's expanded our conceptions of everything that's going on with the Veil, and that's a really important line of speculation and discussion. So, all of that aside, let's actually jump into this topic ourselves. And with that said, where do we begin? Well, let's start with the image of the Veil, and also, let's put it side by side with this image of the Neomuna law book, known as Last Days. Yeah, small fact I missed from the video, but the logo of the Last Days law book is clearly the Veil. You can even see it throughout Neomuna on the side of all the structures. It doesn't add much, but it does reconfirm that that is indeed what the structure of the Veil looks like. In my last video, I talked a lot about how the veil in the context of the structure is made up of potentially both aspects of light and dark, with the upper half of the structure being darkness and the lower half of the structure being light. The whole bit of it being a structure of light part is particularly tantalizing given the roots that are very reminiscent of the Tree of Silver Wings, but it's also worth remembering that it's kind of more questionable, seeing as it's only referred to in the context of light once or twice, and given the number of times that the Veil is instead referenced as an artifact of darkness. All that aside, there is something to be said about the structure of the Veil being very fungal in nature. Let me explain, here's a diagram. Generally speaking, your garden variety fungi has two sections to it, the bit you see and the bit you don't. The fruiting body, which includes the cap, it's the mushroom or toadstool that we're all very typical of seeing. We understand what that looks like, we associate that as fungus. It's what you don't see that we need to really talk about, and that's the mycelium beneath, which is kind of a network that works a little bit like the roots of a tree, collecting nutrients from the soil. Now, if you look at the veil itself, you can see the roots as potentially akin to mycelium, Therefore, the veil is a sort of cosmic structure like that of a fungus. That's where our big question today really leads. And again, whilst I am retreading a lot of the theory from Maximizing Destiny's video, he credits a user on Twitter by the name of V40 with the original theory of it all. So this is really just me picking up the different threads that these people have put down and highlighting the brilliance that they've put into this place and this discussion. So. I'll leave links to her original tweet and the thread around that, and also to Maximizing Destiny's video. Just go ahead and spotlight all of these people. Uh, say thank you for adding to the discussion. Anyway, to dive a little deeper into how this all relates to the Veil, there are some things that indicate that it too has a network of sorts that binds and connects things together, much like the mycelial network of fungus. For those of you that didn't know, when you see a fungus which sprouts out of the ground, it represents actually far less of the actual fungus than the mycelium beneath will, which is about 90% of the organism, if not more. The organic web of mycelium connects each sprouting mushroom to its neighbors, and assuming they're all part of the same organism, it means it's one big animal. Well, fungi. One big living thing. The scale of the mycelial network in particular can be enormous, 
as is the case with a fungus known as the humongous fungus, which is a colony of mushrooms in the continental United States that takes up over 200 acres of land. So, yeah, that's mildly terrifying. Thanks again to Maximizing Destiny for that little bit of fungus knowledge. The point is, the mycelial network in fungus acts like a sort of unseen layer of connection, and this is where the similarity to the veil really comes in. In particular, it's something that's expressed by the architecture of the cloud arc and in the nature of one of the byproducts of the veil, Strand. First of all, Maximizing Destiny highlighted the idol Neomuna citizen dialogue, which I'd actually never seen or heard prior to this moment, and some dialogue from Quinn. Those two bits of dialogue boil down to stating that the cloud arc is in fact an organic system, not like a traditional digital computer system, and that everywhere notes things about how the cloud arc creates a collective unconsciousness. Furthermore, you've got to consider what the Cloud Strider Blue Jay stated when we reconstructed his monument. Take a listen. This links in really neatly with one tweet from a concept artist at Bungie called Dima Gordianov. Again, this is the third or fourth time I've said their name. I'm so sorry if I'm butchering it. I don't know the pronunciation and I'm very sorry, but your stuff on the veil is one of our only sources, so this may not be the last time I say it. Point is, they talk about the veil being a kind of repository for the memories of the universe. And with this in mind, yeah, everything that Blue Jay just said, it kind of fits like a glove. The connective idea of a network of mycelium is adequately demonstrated by people's experiences with the veil as displayed in the cloud arc. It creates reality in front of them. The commentary also reminds me of the opening parts of the Last Days lore book, in particular of a member of Neo Muna's society called Photon. Photon with a zero instead of a second O. Photon is a citizen who's been taking frequent visits into the Cloud Arc and starts to comprehend with greater depth all of its connections. Take a listen to this excerpt from them. Filaments of data stretched across infinity, reality interwoven into silken threads, and Photon drifted lazily mingling the data that defined objective existence with subjective perspective. Reality frayed in the deep cloud arc, and took down the borders between self and code with it. File requests felt like ants on her skin, and now, with lockdown, she could stay here whenever she wanted, without any of the messy needs of material reality. No bio breaks or excusing herself from dinner invites, she stretched and composed herself, turning her perception back towards the shallows, where data shadows cast the impression of streets and buildings in a familiar landscape. It seems like the experience within the Deep Veil vale feels very organic in nature, something with a vastness at one's fingertips that is just out of reach and yet ever-present all at the same time. However, all this only summarizes the experience of individuals when one is in contact with the Veil via the Cloud Arc, and it says nothing of the nature of Strand. Strand is something which I'll be covering soon given its importance to the video, and also its relevance to the Veil, but to give you a little bit of a preview of to that video, Strand is very much based on the power of connection instead of the power of control, like Stasis is. We know, thanks to the flavor text of the Veil Spectrometer, which eventually we turn into the exotic weapon known as Final Warning, that Strand is seemingly a paracausal byproduct of the Veil. There are a bunch of ways of explaining this, but the way our ghost explains it in one of the Lightfall campaign missions is that Strand energy radiates outwards from a common source, a little bit like a magnetic field all around Neptune. In this way, the energy of Strand that emanates from the Veil is a lot like a mycelial network too. It's invisible, but it radiates out from the veil and is most abundant in direct proximity to it. However, 
In the case of Strand and the Veil, the whole thing is clearly operating on a scale that can be felt throughout the universe. It's the case that you can take Strand anywhere. Wherever we go, we are still able to tap into the threads of the universe, and we can still reveal the web. So maybe it's the case that Strand and the fungal potential of the Veil is something we really need to look into. But here's the most tantalizing link of them all, which is something that I really want to hear more about when it comes to the future. It's to do with Egregore. We'll definitely be talking more about Egregore as time goes on. It's a worthy topic because it comes up in the seasonal story as well. But Egregore also is worth discussing because it seems to have some similar properties to what's being experienced by the citizens of Neomuna with the Cloud Arc and the connective organic network that it forms. Listen to what Callus told us back in the season of The Haunted and you'll get a better idea. They are majestic, are they not? These fungi are not unlike your world's mushrooms and how they live, how they breathe, how they grow. Their mycelial networks do not proliferate in soil, but rather spread like ethereal conduits between dimensions of space. This sounds a lot like the ley lines in the Dreaming City. Is that possible? I have become quite attached to this fungus since I discovered it on a world far from yours. It grew in great forests across the planet. Even here, infinitely far from where the first spore was harvested, they remain connected. Darkness is many things, Guardian. Many things. I'm sure Eris might find this information insightful, but I'm a bit nervous about intelligent fungus that can think across the void of space. There's spores in the air here, same kind we'd seen aboard Callus's research vessel Glycon. They don't seem to be harmful. Aspirating the Egregore spores allows them to take root in your body. While they are symbiotic, they are also short-lived. But for a time, they join your consciousness to that of the mycelial network and other minds that would witness you. So yeah, the citizens of Neomuna have been experiencing something similar within the Cloud Arc. This connection that doesn't require physicality, but is connected to via one's own mind. And the Veil, in that sense, may be similar to Egregore in this regard. Its influence potentially reaching out across time and space as an organic network that can connect minds together, kind of like what happens in the Cloud Arc. However, Egregore is only temporarily able to connect minds across vast distances. The Veil seems to build a permanent structure with Strand and the web, and the Cloud Arc is a sustainable and virtual environment that is based upon that. So maybe Egregore is a little bit like the Veil, but it's imperfect. Wonder where we've heard that before. Anyway, headcanon assumptions aside from all of that, that's our exploration of this stuff and it ends today. And again, I know I've said it a bunch of different times, but I'll be leaving you all with that link in the description, and I highly encourage you to go ahead and watch Maximizing Destiny's video on this. Furthermore, I can't wait to see the larger video that they've promised soon. No pressure there, bud. But uh, yeah, I really want to see what your take is on mushrooms and their place in Destiny generally. All of the crazy psychedelic nonsense aside, that's our video for today, and I hope you enjoyed it. It's very different, but it's something which I thought was remarkably important, especially in the context of the Veil and what we might know about it going forward. Anyway, with all of that being said, if you enjoyed this, go ahead and leave a like, and of course, if you want more Destiny lore content, you can go ahead and subscribe, and hit the bell next to subscribe to turn on those email notifications. As per usual though, know that your viewership as always is quite enough for me, and that in the meantime, my name has been, my name is Bife. Rodasia Adastra. I'll see you, Starside. <laughs>